Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher. And you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. We are waiting for the rapture. Many of us are expecting the rapture to happen at any moment. We're anticipating this great event. We're looking forward to it. But where do we go once the rapture happens? That's what I want to talk to you about today. Where do we go after the rapture? And what do we do after the rapture? Let's turn to the Bible. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 to see what Paul the Apostle says about this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, Paul is teaching about the rapture. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Paul's explaining the sequence. The Lord himself, he will leave heaven. He will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. When Paul says the dead in Christ, he's talking about the departed saints of God who died before the Lord returned. Their spirits are with the Lord, and they will come back with the Lord in the clouds, but their bodies remain here on the earth. At the rapture, the, the bodies of the departed saints will be reconfigured, reformatted, resurrected, and then raptured. Then... Those who remain, those who are alive and remain, shall be caught up, will be seized up, will be taken up. Well, Paul says, will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye, and this body will become an incorruptible body. And we will be changed, and we will have a celestial body, and we'll, a resurrected body, and we'll go up to be with the Lord in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. It appears that when the rapture occurs, we are taken up into the clouds above the earth. We don't remain there. And in fact, we have to take care of some important matters. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But we remain there until we actually come back with the Lord at the end of the tribulation period. Look at Revelation chapter 19. We come back with the Lord Jesus Christ at the very end of the tribulation period, at the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the end of the age. We return back with the Lord. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 tells us, Now I saw heaven open. John is explaining a vision that he had. And this vision is of the last days, the last of the last days, the very end, when Jesus comes back. And now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Look at this verse. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. We are going to be with the Lord at the very end. He's coming back to fight the great battle of Armageddon and then set up his millennial kingdom. We are coming back with him. We're riding back with him on white horses. We're wearing white linen. We're on white horses. We're right behind the Lord as this event happens. And then he will annihilate the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon and establish a thousand-year millennial reign on the earth. That's what happens at the end. But what happens after the rapture and at the end? There's got to be something more that's going on. Are we just sitting on the clouds waiting for our time? No, 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 no. There's going to be many things that are going to happen after the rapture. When we're up there, above the atmosphere, above the earth, in the clouds. Number one, there'll be many reunions. Reunions. People who have lost connection. People who have lost contact with them. People who died will be reunited. Families will be reunited. Friendships will be reunited. There will be first time meetings. We'll meet people that we never uh, thought we could meet here on the earth. We'll meet them in heaven. And we'll meet people from the past. Every saint of God will be up there at, this, at, at the rapture event. And we'll be able to meet these people. Paul and the apostles. All these famous people that we read about. We'll be able to meet these people through reunions. Number two, what's, what are we going to do after the rapture? There will be rewards. We will experience the Bema Seat judgment. Where? 
Each believer is rewarded for things done on the earth. Being at the Bema seat judgment is a good thing. You, if you made it to that judgment, if you get to this point in, in your Christian walk, you're being rewarded. And all of us will be there. Every born again believer will stand before the Bema seat judgment. And we will receive crowns, a new name, hidden manna, white garments, a white stone with a new name written on it, to name just a few. Rewards. And number three, the marriage supper of the Lamb. We will experience the marriage supper of the Lamb after the rapture, while we're in the atmosphere, while we're in the clouds above the earth. We will experience the marriage supper of the Lamb. Lamb. Look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 6 through 9. Revelation chapter 19, 6 through 9. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of many thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true saints of God. How exciting! The marriage supper of the Lamb. We will partake in this great event. How interesting! If we are actually above the earth, in the atmosphere, in the clouds, way up there, if we're actually doing that, is it possible, will it be possible for the Antichrist, for Satan, the Antichrist, and the rest of the world's population, could they actually look up and witness this? Kind of brings new meaning to Psalm 23, especially verses 4 through 6. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. God prepares a table, the marriage supper, right in front of Satan, right in front of the Antichrist, right, right in front of the false prophet, right in front of the whole world, right there in the atmosphere above the earth. I had a dream once, a spiritual dream, where I knew it was during the tribulation period. I knew we were at the end of the, we were at the, end of the age, and it was the tribulation period, and the world was experiencing uh, the, the Antichrist and the mark of the beast and the beast system and all this was going on. I knew that. And in this dream, I saw people that I work with at my work site, but they were working at night. They were working in the dark. It was dark outside. At the time, I thought it must just be because the tribulation period is so dark that everybody's walking around in darkness. Now I'm beginning to wonder. Maybe it really was we, they were forced to work at night. Maybe the Antichrist will be so enraged at the outcome that, that, that the rapture event has happened and that the, the, the Christians are up there in the clouds rejoicing before the Lord and partaking in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Maybe he will be so enraged that he will cause an actual global lockdown or a curfew mandating that no one is to go out during daylight, and no one is to look up towards the clouds. In other words, don't look up. That is something that, that we won't be concerned with, though, as believers in Christ, as born-again believers. We will be raptured. We will be up there in the clouds. We'll be on the other side of that whole thing. We will be in the clouds above the great tribulation, preparing to come back with the Lord, experiencing the marriage supper of the Lamb, experiencing the Bema seat of Christ, reunited with loved ones and people that we didn't even know before. We'll experience all this in the time frame between the rapture and before the battle of Armageddon. 
And that day is fast approaching. It's approaching very fast. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Keep watching. Keep sharing. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. I appreciate that. And most important of all, as I like to say, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. God bless you.